Thank you for joining us today with the Buncombe Baptist Association for the month of May as we've been talking to pastors throughout the county concerning uh, reopening or relaunching uh, ahead as we're given the opportunity to do that. Joining me today is Pastor Jeff Dowdy of Swannanoa First Baptist and also Pastor Chris Reese of Inca Baptist Church. And so you'll view this on the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th of May. And so I encourage you to let your friends know and also allow your church members and leadership to know that this can be viewed each day. So we want to take some simple questions that hopefully will give you a fresh idea or a fresh thought about your reopening process in the days ahead. We know that this past week uh, that we were given an opportunity to be back in our buildings, whether that's the wise thing to do immediately or uh, when that time comes, that is a choice for the local church, for every local church is autonomous. But we want to just give you an idea, maybe a thought that will help you as we begin that reopening, relaunching process. Jeff, I'm, I'm curious how you and your family have handled this pandemic um, for the last few weeks. Tell me about sure. your family. So I have, uh, my wife's a first grade teacher. I have a 17 year old, a 14 year old, a junior and an eighth grader. So uh, we have been on, at one time, all four of us have had meetings on Zoom and we've kind of burned that up. It has provided opportunities for us to have extra time together, which has been wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, especially with my children. And um, normally we'd have been really busy this spring with uh, everything from dramas to uh, track season. And we'd have been gone all sorts of times, but it's been great to be back together um, okay. during these days. Great. So they're all doing well. So I um, want to ask Jeff what thoughts that he has had and the leadership team at Swannanoa First Baptist. And let's begin with talking about preparing your facility during this time. So um, just some of the things that we've done, um, our maintenance staff has done an excellent job of going through and doing some extra cleaning, uh, making sure that we're prepared in that way. We've also gone through and marked off our pews so uh, whenever we can come back inside to have every other pew marked off uh, to where uh, you can't sit on that particular pew to give some social distancing that way mm -hmm. um, and we've tried to provide extra hand sanitizer although that has been hard to come by up until the last week or so yeah. um, and so we've been able to gather some together so that we have that whenever we can come back together okay we've noticed the cost of hand sanitizer I know, yes. notice it, you have too, as you probably perceive some for your personal household. But now as churches begin to reopen, the building begins to reopen. Uh, that's going to be a necessity. There is one particular place we're aware of in the area that uh, it's one of the, the least expensive I've heard. It's $44 a gallon. Yep. Um, and there is hand sanitizer out there that is, has been even much more than that. But that's certainly going to be a necessity as well as people understanding the social distancing. So um, before the building is reopened, uh, do you plan to continue to stress that and the importance of that before your people arrive back in the building? Yeah, it's, it's an important thing. Uh, we just, uh, so I guess when they're viewing this a couple weeks ago, we had an outdoor service. And uh, as we gathered, everybody was doing very good with their social distancing. As we had 35, 40 minutes after the service of kind of conversation, people began to get closer and closer and closer. So it's just going to be something that we have to remind each other of, uh, that it's going to be important. Um, we're a, a congregation that likes to hug on each other and care for one another, and uh, we're going to miss that. But we're going to have to keep some distance apart from one another uh, so that everybody stays healthy during this time. Exactly. And we are built for fellowship. And so it is something new that we're going to be learning. And let me just stop here and, and just make you aware that we're hearing from some churches in Tennessee uh, that had the opportunity to reopen on Mother's Day weekend in May and chose not to do that and to wait till this past weekend, the 18th. They prepared well with a leadership team. Two members of the leadership team are in the medical community. Uh, they sent out not only through social media by email but also a personal letter to every household describing the reopening process and how they would be seated 
uh, they would be received. Uh, they wanted to make sure they had adequate space. They had a separated fellowship building that they set up for overflow, uh, hoping you know, to have a, a large portion or percentage of their 175. Uh, they had less than 50. And so I, I think to not have, to not to be overly expectant of the initial return because some folks will still not be comfortable in the days ahead. So uh, thank you for joining us and we'll hear from Pastor Chris Reese. Joining me now for session one today on Monday of the 25th of May is Pastor Chris Reese of the Inca Baptist Church. And we're discussing, discussing three questions during this session. First of all, I wanna ask Chris how you and your family are doing during this pandemic. Uh, first of all, Perry, I'd like to just thank you for taking the time to uh, putting it, this out there every week. Uh, I know I found it beneficial um, to sit down and view several of these to help us prepare uh, for the weeks, months ahead. So thank you. Uh, my family and I are fine. Um, I have uh, you know two teenage daughters and a, a ten-year-old, and they're very active in sports and school and. Um, you know, on the softball field, and I had one that was going to be running track, and they were they were all pumped up for a busy, busy spring. To all of a sudden, nothing. So it's been an adjustment, but uh, they have managed it well. I've tried to get them outdoors as much as possible um, to try to uh, get some kind of normalcy right now. So thank you for asking. Yes, and Brandy is an essential employee. Yes. Yeah, so so that's left you as uh, the primary daycare. <laughs> yeah, uh, referee, teacher, principal. Uh, she is, my wife is an essential employee, so uh, she's had to go to, to work every day. And Good. Well, let me just ask you a, a, these three questions, and you can tell us your thoughts. And it's very important that we take um, the thoughts of pastors who are in their local context here in Buffalo County. And, so, and we gain and we learn every week. Um, Chris, how do, you, how do you anticipate or your leadership anticipate preparing your facilities for a reopening? We, we have a, a, a custodian that takes care of our, of our facilities. And um, even right before the we had to shut down, we had a, a game plan in place uh, that she was going through the facility, you know, immediately afterwards and cleaning and sanitizing and uh, taking care of the facility um, before the next uh, time we would get together. And uh, currently, as we're talking about reopening the church, uh, we are discussing the idea of doing two services. Uh, we're looking at the idea of 9 and 11. And in the hour in between the services, uh, our custodian, as well as with some helpers, will go through and wipe down and clean and sanitize everything before the 11 o'clock um, worship. Have you given any thoughts to the restricted numbers, and we don't know what those numbers will be uh, quite yet. Um, and you mentioned multiple services, services, and you mentioned how you're going to disinfect between those services, which is great. Um, how many do you think, with social distancing, in your worship center, would you be comfortable with in one, one service? The, the quote-unquote magic number we're looking for from the governor is for him to give us the okay uh, between 20 and 25 and when he gives us that number um, you know we'll we will resume our services at 9 and 11 and we will mark off uh, every other pew uh, to encourage the social distancing as people are in and um, we will also do reservations um, for the 9 and 11 o'clock to try to make sure that we do not go over that number uh, for the safety of our congregation Thank you. And just to add, I, I know in the, the past weeks we've uh, we picked up a little nugget from one of our pastors also that talked about the possibility of dismissing pews so that people don't have a lot of opportunity to interact or get too close. And and so and, and senior adults in particular that might need to be di dismissed prior to the other being dismissed so they can get to their cars and and practice social distancing in a safe way. So, Chris, thank you for joining me today. And uh, we just look forward to what God will do in the congregations at Inca Baptist and also 
Swan and Newell first in the days ahead. Thank you. Join us tomorrow at noon.